Mr. Bezos, in July 2019, your employee, Nate Sutton, told me under oath in this committee that Amazon does not, quote, use any specific seller data when creating its own private brand product. So let me ask you, Mr. Bezos, does Amazon ever access and use third-party seller data when making business decisions? And just a yes or no will suffice, sir. Uh I thank you uh, for the question. I know it's an important topic, and I also want to thank you for representing us. Uh, I can't answer that question, yes or no. What I can tell you is we have a policy against using seller-specific data uh, to aid our private label business, uh, but I can't guarantee you that that policy has never been violated. Mr. Bezos, you're probably aware that an April 2020 report in the Wall Street Journal revealed that your company does access data on third-party sellers, both by reviewing data on popular individual sellers and products and by creating tiny product categories that allowed your company to categorically access detailed seller information in a supposedly aggregate category. Do you deny that report? Uh, I'm familiar with the Wall Street Journal article that you're talking about. And we continue to look into that very carefully. I'm not yet satisfied that we've gotten to the bottom of it, and we're going to keep looking at it. Okay. It's so, not as so easy to do as you would think because some of the sources in the article are anonymous, but we continue to look into it. I'll take that as a you're not denying that. You're looking into it. Um, I will tell you a former Amazon employee in third-party sales and recruitment told this committee, quote, there's a rule, but there's nobody enforcing or spot-checking. They just say, don't help yourself to the data. It's a candy shop. Everyone can have access to anything they want. Do category managers have access to non-public data about third-party products and businesses? Uh, I, here's what I can tell you. Um, uh, the, we do have certain safeguards in place. We train people on the policy. We expect people to follow that policy the same way we would any other. It's a voluntary policy. As far as I'm aware, no other so there's retailer no, so limits there's no their actual, use of data at all. There's no actual enforcement. Have, there's no actual enforcement oh, no, that, of that policy. Gonna, so it's voluntary and there's there, no actual enforcement. So maybe no, that no, answers no, my... No, sorry. No, I think, I think I may have misspoke. I'm trying to say that the Amazon's, the fact that we have such a policy is voluntary. I think no other retailer even has such a policy. Okay. Well, uh, well, our that's, enforcement okay. of that policy, we, we would treat that like any internal policy. And if we found that someone violated it, we would take action against them. Well, there's numerous reports, um, and the committee has conducted interviews with former employees who confirm that there are employees who do have access to that data and are using it. Um, and so my next question was going to be, if you, if you thought you were actually enforcing these rules, do you think that that's working? Um, and again, I would just say that there's credible reporting that's documented breaches of these rules that you have put into place. Um, and the committee has interviewed employees that uh, typically say, say that these breaches typically occur. Let's talk about aggregate data for a minute. Your rules do allow for you to access combined data on a product when there are only one or two sellers in the marketplace, correct? Uh, yes, aggregate data uh, is allowed under our policies. That is correct. Okay. And interviews with former employees have made it clear that that aggregate data essentially allows access to highly detailed data in those product categories. There's the example of Fortem, a small business that had no direct competitors except for Amazon warehouse deals, a resale clearing account. Uh, clearance account that only sold 17 units. An Amazon employee accessed a detailed sales report on Fortum's product with information on how much the company spent on advertising per unit and the cost to ship each trunk. And then Amazon launched its own competing products in October 2019. That's a major loophole, and I go back to the general counsel's statement to this committee very clearly that there was no access to this data, that Amazon does not use that data for its own benefit, and I'm now hearing you say, well, you're not so sure that that's going on. Um, and the issue that we're concerned with here is, is very simple. You have access to data that far exceeds the sellers on your platforms with whom you compete. You can track consumer habits, interests, even what consumers clicked on but then didn't buy. You have access to the entirety of sellers' pricing and inventory information, past, present, and future, 
and you dictate the participation of third-party sellers on your platform. So you can set the rules of the game for your competitors, but not actually follow those same rules for yourself. Do you think that's fair to the mom and pop third-party businesses who are trying to sell on your platform? I appreciate that question, and I like it a lot because I really want a chance to address that. Uh, I'm very proud of what we've done for third-party sellers on this platform. We started our third-party platform 20 years ago, and we had zero sellers on it. The, the uh, question eBay I'm asking, I'm sorry, one. I'm so sorry, and my time sorry, is expiring, ahead. and the question I wanted to ask you is um, that you have access to data that your competitors do not have. So you might allow third-party sellers onto your platform, but if you're continuously monitoring the data to make sure that they're never going to get big enough that they can compete with you, that is actually the concern that the committee has. And, you know, I think your company started in my district. I want to thank you for that. I want to thank you for the work that you've done and say that the whole goal of this committee's work is to make sure that there are more Amazons, that there are more Apples, that there are more companies that get to innovate and small businesses get to thrive. And that is what we're trying to get at. That is why we need to regulate these marketplaces so that no company has a platform so dominant that it is essentially a monopoly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I yield the back. Time of the General has expired. I just want to... Uh